Hi, in this video, I'd like to take a look at how we can use zip to do some really interesting things in Python. And in particular, in this case, we're going to look at how we can use it for doing pairwise iteration. Suppose we have this list over here, say one, two, three, four, five, and six. And what we want to do is we want to iterate through that list pairwise, something that might look like this. And I'm going to copy paste this from the notebook, which is available in the GitHub repo that is linked below this video. So we want to iterate through the list this way. We want one, two, then two, three, then three, four, then four, five, and then five, six. Now we could certainly set up a loop of indices and do it kind of the more traditional way, but that's not very Pythonic. And we can use the zip function and slicing to achieve the same thing in a far more elegant manner. So if we were to use that, we could say four T in, and then we're gonna zip two things. We're gonna zip the list L, and then we're going to slice the list L from one, so from the second, basically, from two, right, going forward, from the second element of the list, going forward. And we're gonna zip those two things together. And when we do that, let's go ahead and print out what we get for each one. So what is T? And as you can see, it's exactly what we wanted. One, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, and so on. So we can even tweak this further to allow us to iterate it a different way where maybe we want something like this instead. We want one, two, and then three, four. We don't want to repeat the two, right? We just want to do it this way. Well, again, we can use the zip function to do this. We can say 4t in, we're going to zip. And now what are we going to zip? Well, we're going to zip. If you look at what are we zipping here? One, three, and five. So in other words, we're starting at the first element and then we're going in steps of two, one, three, five. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna start at the beginning of the list and then we're just gonna go in steps of two. What are we zipping here? What's the right-hand element? It's two, four, six. So basically we're starting at the second element, index one, and then we're going in steps of two. So we're gonna do that as well. We're gonna start at one, go all the way to the end in steps of two. And so if we print that, we get one, two, three, four, five, six, which is exactly what we wanted. Now, of course, we can expand on this to iterate in three tuples, four tuples, etc. cetera. So for example, let's go ahead and create this uh, range. So we'll say range 10, and then I'm gonna say for T in, and I'm gonna zip, and let's say I'm gonna zip L, and then I'm gonna zip L starting at one, and then I'm gonna zip L again. So I'm gonna do a third zip and start at two. And so we get 0, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4. Or we could do it this way as well. If we don't want these kind of overlaps, we can basically do this. We can say for T in zip, and then we're gonna zip L starting at the first element, and then we'll go in steps of three. And then we'll do L starting at the first element, going in steps of three, and then we'll start L again, but at two this time, going in steps of three. And then if we print T, then we get zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And of course we don't get the last nine because, well, that doesn't show up because we only have three elements in some of those zips. Now in all those examples, we created new lists when we used slicing. And this may actually be too wasteful in some circumstances, but we can easily replace list slices with the iSlice function that's available in the Edit Tools module. The advantage is that iSlice is an iterator and we don't incur the memory costs of creating extra lists. Amongst other things as well, iSlice can basically slice iterators in general, not just, or iterables in general, not just lists or tuples. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say from Edit Tools, we can import iSlice. And let's look at our first example again. So we're just gonna use it, create it by using this range. And then we're gonna say for T in zip, and then we're gonna zip L, and then we're gonna zip I slice L. We're going to start at one, and we're not gonna skip or stop anywhere. So we'll just use the simple version this way, and we're gonna print T. And so as you can see, we get the same thing that we had before. Right, when, but and before we were using the slice L1 colon colon. Now we can similarly change the other examples we saw earlier. For example, we could do this. We could say L equals range 10. 
and then we can say for t in and so what did we have before let's go ahead and just come back and just paste that in so this is what we had right so we were iterating it this way so now let's change it we're going to keep the same l we're going to say for t in zip and we're going to do l this time we're going to use an i slice not a regular slice and we're going to st take l start at one none and then we're going to do i slice l start at two none if you want to know what the what the arguments are for i slice you can just say help i slice like so and so basically when you provide two arguments the first one is the iterable and then the stop if you provide more than that then you have to provide the iterable the start the stop and then optionally the step so that's what i'm doing here right i'm basically saying specifying the start and the stop but i'm not specifying the step which is optional same thing here so this is equivalent to the slice that we did before except we're doing it now using i slice and we get the same result right so let me go ahead and delete that you can see we get the same result with those two and we can even use the step of course if we wanted to so let's go ahead and look at this example again let's take this one and i'm going to actually make this a little bit bigger i'll say range 15 okay so i have an odd number of elements in here and so we get 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 i chose an odd you know a multiple of three i should say so that we would end up you know, collecting everything in that range as we're iterating through it. Now we can do the same thing as the slice using I slice. So we can basically take this and then here, instead of saying that, we're going to say I slice. We're going to I slice L. This time we have no start, no stop, but steps of three, right? This is exactly what that was over here. Here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say I slice. We're going to take L, we're going to start at 1, we're not going to stop anywhere, and we're going to go in steps of 3, like so. So exactly like what we had before, and except using I slice, and then here we'll do L, and then 2, uh, none, and then in steps of 3, like so. And I'm missing a comma here, so let's fix that. And there we go, we get the same result. Now note that for pairwise iteration, the very first example we did, and then the modified one using iSlice, it's actually directly available in the edit tools module. You do not have to go ahead and write things this way. So this, this first one that we did. So let me show you that. So from edit tools, we're going to import pairwise. This is the function in edit tools. And let's say L is range one through seven. So we'll just use that example again that we had all the way at the beginning. And then we're going to say for T in pairwise, and then we're going to do pairwise of L, and then we're just going to print T out. And as you can see, we get one, two, two, three, three, four, etc. So that was the very first example we did. Now we already know that using I slice, since it's an iterator, is going to reduce memory utilization. So when you're dealing with large lists, instead of using the slicing, which is going to create all those other large lists as well, you're going to start chewing up your memory. That's one thing. But what about speed? Is iSlice going to be faster or slower than doing the actual slicing? So we can look at some timings between the two approaches to see how much of an impact using iSlice will have over regular slicing for large lists. So let's go ahead and import time it. So from time it, we can import time it. And then let's go ahead and create some functions. So let's do iterate using slice. We'll pass the sum list L. And we're going to say for T in zip L3. So we'll do the, that example there. We'll go from one in steps of three. And then the third one will be two in steps of three, like so. And I'm not actually going to do anything with that. I'm just going to pass. I just want to actually time the iteration. OK. And then the other one that we have to do is to iterate using slice, using I slice. So iterate using I slice. And again, we'll pass it L. And we're going to do here is for T in zip. And then we'll just say I slice. We'll go, we'll take L. We won't specify a start or a stop, but we'll go in steps of three. Then we'll do I slice again L. This time we're going to start at one. We won't specify a stop and we'll go in steps of three. And then lastly, we'll do the same thing. 
but we'll start at two and again go in steps of three. And again, I'm just going to pass. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to process those elements. I just want to actually do the iteration, perform the iteration, because of course, zip is an iterator. It's not going to actually do any work until you start iterating through it. So we need to make sure we do that iteration. I could have just used a list, you know, passed that those zips to a list, but let's do it this way. Now let's go ahead and create a large list. So we'll take range, let's say 100,000 elements in the list and let's time it. So let's time and then we're going to iterate, iterate using slice, we'll pass it L and then we'll pass it our globals so that the time it has access to iterate slice and L and then we'll repeat this, let's say a thousand times. Okay, I should try and spell that right. Iterate slice, let's run this again. And we get 1.22 seconds. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing, but this time we're going to do it with the I slice. As you can see, it took quite a bit longer. So I slice is substantially slower than regular slicing. So the advantage here is not speed, but rather memory usage. So this is a tip when you're dealing with large lists and you need to do this kind of slicing, I slice might work better for you in terms of memory, not necessarily in terms of speed. And also we saw how to use zip in some quite interesting ways. Thanks for watching.